I thank you. Um, we'll now recognize the uh, ranking member of the Small Business Committee, Ms. Velasquez, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Harrell, building on what the ranking member Waters uh, was saying, Chinese government bonds are due, are is on issue $3.3 uh, trillion less than half the value of U.S. treasuries held by foreigners. But do you believe playing around with the debt ceiling as the Republicans are doing will cause foreign governments to move away from treasuries and possibly into China, uh, Chinese bonds? I do think that a, um, a, 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 thank you, Congresswoman, for the, the question. I do think that a debt default and, and even sort of serious brinksmanship does undermine um, confidence by uh, investors, whether sovereign investors or private investors in Europe uh, and elsewhere in uh, the U.S. Treasury market, and I do think we'll have long, uh, long-term adverse consequences uh, to our Treasury market. I'm not sure that um, investors would go into China as they exit um, U.S. bonds. China obviously has a bunch of capital controls, and there's sure reasons why uh, in the markets they may not do that, but I do think it will undermine the kind of preeminence of the U.S. Uh, financial system uh, if we uh, have serious brinksmanship here. And Mr. Harrell, the Chinese economy faces several challenges that predate the pandemic, including significant levels of corporate debt, which reached $29 trillion in the first quarter of 2022, the highest in the world. There have also been concerns with the debt levels of its real estate sector, wealth management products, and local governments, as well as its off-balance lending activities, do you see China's high level of debt, particularly corporate debt, as a significant problem for the world's economy? What impact could China's debt levels have on American companies invested in China? Um, I think it's important that we all, as we think about China uh, policy, we all recognize that China, though a serious competitor, uh, and by far our most significant economic competitor, is not 10 feet tall. You know, it's not some sort of mythical uh, beast that we cannot outcompete. And I think you've highlighted a couple of the reasons, Congresswoman, why that's the case. They do have high levels of debt. They also have serious long-term demographic uh, problems, uh, coming to having a shrinking working age um, population. Um, I do think that it'll be interesting to see as China comes out of COVID uh, if they are uh, able, in fact, to hit the growth targets they are trying to hit this uh, year without further increasing uh, their debt problem. Um, and I think we should be um, keenly aware of the potential financial risks uh, that could come from a uh, unwinding of Chinese uh, debt. And Mr. Harrell, repeated lockdowns slash China's growth uh, rate to 3.0% in 2022, a pace below the global average for the first time in more than 40 years. While the IMF is predicting that China's economy will expand by 5.2% in 2023, it will slow again in 2024. Some have argued that China's uneven economic performance since the pandemic enhances our leverage over China, and now is an opportune moment to further address many of the trade imbalances and systemic issues American business uh, face in China. Can you explain whether this is a view you share? So I think the last couple of years have been a real wake-up call for businesses, uh, both in the U.S. and in Western allies that have been doing business in China. I think they have seen how the, um, China's mishandled response to COVID disrupted supply chains. I think they have seen a long-term trend of slowing growth uh, in China. I do think this year China is going to probably have a reasonably high rate of growth as it bounces back from COVID, but that's not going to, we're not going to see a return to many years of six, seven percent uh, growth in China. And I think that that is why you, and of course, I think people have seen the geopolitical uh, risks uh, that we see with China, and the recent balloon incident only highlights those. So I think you are beginning to see a very significant corporate rethinking of um, the role companies want to have uh, in China and the risks they face there. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I 